Have you ever considered the unbelievable darkness that may envelop regular lives, concealing horrible tragedies inside the confines of familial bonds? The tragic case of Zara Baker draws us into a world where tragedy unfolds within the walls of a family home, leaving us with the unnerving question, how can a place that should be a refuge become the setting for a terrifying story? Now she's gone. I don't know what to do. Very, very empty. Before we begin, we want to acknowledge the severity of the subject matter. The murder of Zara Baker is an alarming story that explores issues of abuse, tragedy, and the fragility of innocence. We understand and handle them with extreme compassion and concern for your well-being. If you find this information upsetting, we recommend that you prioritize your mental health and consider if you're comfortable going forward. Your mental health is of utmost significance. Welcome to our video where we'll dive into Zara Baker's terrible story and investigate the structural faults that led to her premature death. By merging views from child safety specialists and psychologists, we hope to offer you an in-depth understanding of the complicated elements at work in instances like Zara's. This video tells Zara's story and provides excellent learning opportunities on how to recognize and maybe avoid such circumstances in the future. Adding thoughts from child protection professionals or psychiatrists helps us acquire a better grasp of the systemic causes that led to tragedies like Zara Baker's. These specialists provide essential insights into the complex dynamics that exist within families and communities, giving light on the underlying causes of child abuse and neglect. Family dynamics, socio-economic inequities, and gaps in the child welfare system can all be examined to identify crucial areas for intervention and prevention. Through their experience, we peel back the layers of Zara's narrative and acquire critical insights into how to treat and alleviate the underlying conditions that cause such catastrophes. Zara Baker, a child born on November 16, 1999, in the serene town of Wagga Wagga, New South Wales, Australia, began her life's journey with promise and hope. However, her story took a tragic turn when she found herself amid a harrowing ordeal in the seemingly peaceful town of Hickory, North Carolina, United States, in October 2010. At the tender age of 10, Zara's sudden disappearance sent shockwaves rippling through the community, leaving neighbors and authorities baffled and deeply concerned. The tranquil atmosphere of Hickory was shattered when, just a month later, Zara's dismembered remains were unearthed, a horrifying reality that shook the foundations of the town to its core. The gruesome nature of Zara's fate garnered widespread attention from media outlets worldwide, thrusting her tragic story into the spotlight and prompting a thorough and meticulous investigation into the circumstances surrounding her untimely demise. As the world grappled with the chilling details of Zara's fate, questions swirled about the events leading up to her disappearance and the dark secrets concealed within the seemingly ordinary facade of the Baker family. How could the life of such a promising young girl take such a dark and sinister turn, and what hidden truths lay buried beneath the surface of her family's outward appearance? Elisa Baker, Zara's stepmother, was pivotal in the tragic story. In a startling turn of events, Elisa confessed to her involvement in Zara's murder in September 2011, leading to an 18-year prison sentence. The details surrounding her admission and accusations against Zara's father, Adam Baker, introduced complexities and layers to the story. The district attorney's decision not to charge Adam due to insufficient evidence raised questions about the dynamics within the Baker household and the motivations behind the crime. How did the relationship dynamics within the family contribute to Zara's horrifying fate? A series of challenges marked Zara's early life. Born to Emily Dietrich and Adam Baker in Wagga Wagga, she battled bone and lung cancer from a young age, resulting in the amputation of one of her legs. Despite her resilience and the eventual remission of her cancer in 2008, Zara's life took a dark turn when she, alongside her father and stepmother, relocated to the United States. Their pursuit of a fresh start in Hickory, North Carolina became overshadowed by the shadows of abuse and neglect. How did Zara's health struggles intertwine with the unfolding tragedy, and what toll did the move to a new country take on her well-being? The Baker family's arrival in Hickory began a disturbing chapter. Zara's abrupt withdrawal from public school raised eyebrows within the community, prompting concerns about her well-being. Allegations of physical and mental abuse against Elisa Baker further deepened suspicions. Teachers, noticing signs of distress on Zara's body, made attempts to intervene, shedding light on the dark undercurrents within the family. How did the community respond to the signs of abuse, and what role did the educational system play in addressing the welfare of vulnerable children like Zara? Despite the intervention attempts by concerned teachers and the involvement of child protective services, Zara's tragic fate remained undeterred. 
The baker's frequent relocation within Caldwell and Catawba counties, coupled with reports of Elisa's abusive conduct dating back to 1999, underscored systemic failures in protecting vulnerable children. Zara's multiple residences became the backdrop to a haunting narrative that unfolded under the watchful eyes of authorities. How did the shortcomings within the child protection system contribute to Zara's vulnerability, and what changes were needed to prevent similar tragedies? They marked a sinister turning point on October 9, 2010. Elisa Baker placed a frantic 9-11 call to report a fire at the family residence in Hickory. The subsequent police arrival uncovered a ransom note and the gasoline smell emanating from Adam's company vehicle. Later that day, at 2 p.m., Adam Baker made a second 9-11 call, reporting Zara's disappearance and revealing the discovery of a $1 million ransom note. The intricate details of the alleged kidnapping plot raised suspicions, setting the stage for an investigation that would unravel the layers of deception within the Baker family. How did the elaborate plot to divert attention obscure the horrifying truth, and what motivated such a calculated scheme? The investigation unfolded with twists and revelations that painted a chilling portrait of Zara's final moments. On October 10, 2010, search and rescue dogs were deployed to search the Baker's residence and vehicles, the Chevrolet Tahoe, and a sedan. Elisa Baker, subjected to a polygraph test in the early stages, failed to conceal her involvement. Canine units deployed to search the Baker residence and vehicles indicated the presence of human remains. Elisa's arrest on unrelated charges, including communicating threats and obstruction of justice, further unraveled the intricate web of deceit. What role did forensic evidence and investigative techniques play in exposing the truth? And how did Elisa Baker's actions contribute to unraveling the case? During a bond hearing in late October 2010, Elisa's daughter, Amber Fairchild, testified, shedding light on her mother's intentions to leave North Carolina just before her arrest. Revelations about Elisa's online relationship with an individual from England and the receipt of substantial sums of money added a layer of complexity to the motive behind Zara's murder. Meanwhile, Elisa's aunt, Bonzetta Winkler, shared disturbing details about Zara's illness before her death and the subsequent dismemberment of her body. The harrowing revelations exposed the extent of Elisa's depravity. Elisa Baker's aunt, Bonzetta Winkler, revealed that Elisa claimed Zara fell ill for two weeks before her death, after which Elisa and Adam allegedly dismembered Zara's body and concealed the remains. Despite this, Elisa later told authorities that Adam dismembered Zara alone after her death, and they both participated in hiding the remains. Elisa also informed the police that Zara died on September 24th, but wasn't reported missing until October 9th. Eric Gein, a dealer in crime memorabilia, corresponded with Elisa while she was in jail under a false identity. Elisa admitted in a letter to Gein that they didn't kill Zara, but described what happened afterward as horrifying. Elisa allegedly informed her attorney, Lisa Dubbs, that Zara's prosthetic leg had been discarded in a dumpster at Fox Ridge Apartments in Hickory, which was used. In late October, a prosthetic leg was found near a road in Caldwell County, matching Zara's medical records, confirming it as hers. In November 2010, Elisa began guiding police to various locations in Catawba and Caldwell counties where Zara's remains were scattered. While many bones were found, her head wasn't located until years later. Elisa also directed police to a dumpster behind a grocery store in Hudson, where they discarded car and bed covers used to conceal Zara. Additionally, she informed them about Zara's body parts in the bathtub's drain trap and the plastic gloves used in her bathroom. How did Elisa Baker's online and offline relationships contribute to the sinister story, and what motivations lay beneath the heinous acts? Elisa's MySpace page became a window into her tumultuous past, revealing a history of multiple marriages and accusations of bigamy. Bigamy charges surfaced when it was discovered that Elisa was still married to Aaron Young when she wed Adam Baker. The intricate details of her relationships, including an alleged connection to a Chainsaw Massacre role-playing scenario on the IMVU website, added a layer of darkness to the unfolding tragedy. How did Elisa's tumultuous personal life intertwine with the events leading up to Zara's murder, and what role did her online interactions play in the disturbing story? The inability to determine a specific cause of death led to the categorization of Zara's passing as an undetermined violent homicide. Despite Elisa Baker's admission to her involvement, unanswered questions persisted. Cell phone tower records indicated that only Elisa, not Adam, was in the vicinity where Zara's remains were discovered. The timeline of events pointed to Elisa's sole responsibility for Zara's murder, further challenging previous suspicions about Adam's involvement. How did the forensics and timeline reconstruction contribute to unraveling the truth, and what lingering doubts remained about Zara's tragic end? 
Elisa Baker faced an indictment for second-degree murder with aggravating circumstances in February 2011. The grand jury cited five aggravating circumstances, including Elisa's history of abuse towards Zara, her attempts to conceal the crime, and the exploitation of trust. The absence of a first-degree murder charge underscored the importance of Elisa's cooperation in disclosing the location of Zara's remains. Adam Baker consistently denied any involvement in his daughter's death, prompting questions about the dynamics of their relationship and the complexities of familial loyalty. How did the legal proceedings unfold, and what factors influenced the charges brought against Elisa Baker? In the wake of Zara's tragic death, questions lingered about the failings of the child protection system, the complexities of familial relationships, and the need for systemic reforms to prevent similar tragedies. Zara's memory became a rallying cry for awareness, advocacy, and change. As communities grappled with the aftermath of the heartbreaking tragedy, there was a renewed call for action to protect vulnerable children and address the root causes of abuse and neglect. Zara's legacy served as a poignant reminder of the importance of collective efforts to create a world where every child is cherished, protected, and allowed to thrive. How did Zara's story ignite conversations about child welfare and inspire calls for reform, and what lasting impact did her memory leave on the community? Zara's story triggered discussions about child welfare and spurred solid calls for reform in communities and institutions. Her horrific story put light on the flaws in existing child protection systems, sparking debate about the need for substantial reforms to protect vulnerable children better. Advocates and policymakers alike were mobilized to address systemic concerns, including reporting gaps and intervention protocols, guarantee that incidents of abuse and neglect are recognized and dealt with more quickly and effectively. Zara's experience prompted a communal awakening about the systemic causes that contribute to child maltreatment, such as poverty, substance addiction, and domestic violence. Communities discussed the value of early intervention, access to mental health resources, and the significance of community support networks in avoiding child abuse and assisting families in distress. As we learn the sad facts of Zara's story, we encourage you to act. Consider engaging in or sponsoring specialized child welfare programs that help disadvantaged children and families. In addition, we advise you to educate yourself on the indicators of child abuse and how to report suspicions or concerns to the proper authorities. By focusing your attention on tangible activities, you can join us in fighting for the safety and well-being of children in our communities.